Hey guys, it's me, James. It's great to be back from my big long vacation away from YouTube and all of you guys. Today, I'm starting uh, on pretty much the most westerly part of the mainland here in BC. It's North Vancouver, BC. I'm way up high in Cypress Park. Uh, just went and visited a customer up this way. And I have a very cool thing that I can talk to you guys about over the next few weeks. And it's gonna be a bit of a series on the differences between the different laser engravers and cutters that Trotec offers. This isn't gonna be differences between us and the other guys. This is gonna be more the differences between the laser you want, the laser you can afford, and the laser you have to have. So I'm gonna get started with our most entry level laser possible. And this is going to be the Rayjet laser, our entry level Rayjet laser. And we're gonna put that one up against our Speedy 100. Okay, let's do it. So a lot of people have in their mind that laser cutters are mostly just bed size, laser tube power, and that's it. Maybe a couple of bells and whistles. Uh, so if you were to pit the Rayjet against the Speedy 100, well of course the Speedy 100 is going to win, right? Uh, as far as bed size, laser power. Uh, unfortunately, there are a lot of differences. Difference number one is the size of the bed. The Rayjet has an 18 inch by 12 inch bed. And this bed is an aluminum bed. It's a, maybe about 60 thousandths of an inch uh, thick, maybe a little more, maybe more like a 1 16th of an inch thick. It's a flat aluminum bed and it does not have a door that opens. Um, the Speedy 100 bed has a steel bed, a very, very thick, heavy steel bed. The door does not open on that one either. But the Speedy 100 has a bed size that's 12 by 24. The 12 by 24 bed on the Speedy 100 is great because you can put standard size pieces of material in. This is, you know, say a sheet of anodized aluminum or a sheet of uh, trophy aluminum or a quarter sheet of trolleys. That is what makes the Speedy 100 much better in the form of size is that you don't have to chop that sheet and have this little tiny piece waiting to be used later. You can throw the whole piece of material in and process it all in the same bed. Next and most common of the differences is the laser tube and the power of the laser. The Rayjet in Canada is only offered in a 30 watt tube. And it's a 30 watt Sinrad tube. Very, very good tube. It is a metal laser tube. So you will still have to deal with leakage and uh, some of the other things that go along with a metal tube. For instance, the power usage on a metal tube is a little more than our Ceramicor Iradeon tubes of the Speedy 100. Speedy 100 uh, at a 50 watt laser tube is a ceramic core laser tube. It's an iradeon. Um, this thing doesn't suffer from the leakage like the metal tubes do, and it gives you boatloads of power, and it's about 30% more efficient than a 50 watt metal tube. So there's a big difference there with the tube. Other things with the tube, the metal tube uh, doesn't flash on and off quite as fast as our iradeon tube. Therefore, we can get higher speeds with the Speedy 100. There's a big speed difference between the Speedy 100 and the Rayjet. The Rayjet, you're running probably up in around the 80 inches per second mark, whereas the Speedy 100, you're running at 110 inches per second, as I said before. 
the laser tube can't flash on and off so fast. Also, the motors that are inside the Rayjet are not going to be as hardy as the motors inside of a Speedy 100. So therefore, what we have is a little, little bit of a speed difference there, uh, not going to be used for high production for sure in your engraving. Next we have build quality. So obviously our fantastic factory builds both of these machines to be the absolute best they can. We built the Rayjet to be a little more affordable for the people who are only using the laser a few times a week so that we can, you know, get you into the market without having to outlay a very large investment. So we have to bring the size of the components down in the Rayjet and back off on some of the impact technology that you'd get from the Speedy 100. Not to say that the Rayjet doesn't have impact on technology, it does. You're still getting protection from dust and smoke the same way that the other ones do. It's just going to be a little bit less. The outside of a Rayjet, eh, there's a lot of plastic involved on the outside. Um, not to say that it's bad quality again, but you are going to run into some plastic parts within the Rayjet. Inside the, the Rayjet, we have smaller motors, we have a very much a smaller belt system. We have very different bearings. We have small rotary bearings. Um, and we have a carriage that is very, very light, um, running on not big steel Thompson bearings, but small rotary bearings. Uh, the Speedy 100, however, the entire case is steel. The entire guts of the machine are steel. The motion system, everything is milled steel. You're not gonna see any bent aluminum parts or plastic parts in the motion system of a Speedy 100. The entire case, the motion system, all very, very, very sturdy. Uh, the, the motors themselves, they're quite a bit larger. They're the brushless DC servo motors. These things are going to run a lot faster and the impact technology which is keeps our motion system clean it protects our belts our bearings our electronics our motors all of this stuff that is going to be stepped up a bit we have uh, walls uh, between the dirty area where we're processing our materials and the clean area where the motion system is and there's positive airflow coming in from the motion system into the dirty area there you don't get quite as much of that protection with the Rayjet as you do with the Speedy 100. The control panel on a Rayjet is just a couple of buttons that, frankly, I don't even use very often. I'm sure some people do. Uh, I'm running everything on the Rayjet from the software. Whereas on the Speedy 100, we have a full complement of buttons on our control panel on the surface of the machine, and this control panel is exactly like the Speedy 300. It's very close to the Speedy 360, very close to the Speedy 400, almost exact with the Speedy 500. So it is up with the Speedy series. It's, it's still got all the functions of the control panel that you're looking for in the larger machines. Now the weight of the machine is going to be quite a bit different. Because this Rayjet is has a plastic parts on the outside, it's built light on the inside, I can actually pick one of these things up. Now, granted, I have kind of a hard time picking this thing up, but I have done it. I've picked one up and put it onto a desk before. I wouldn't want to carry this around town, uh, even though it would look really cool with my outfit. It's not something I want to carry around town. The Speedy 100, on the other hand, there is no way I can pick one of those things up. I think it weighs somewhere close to about 190 pounds. So if you're looking for a true mobility uh, and you want to have to carry the machine from place to place, you're going to want to look more towards the Rayjet than the Speedy 100. That being said, before we had James in the van, we had James in the skinny car, and we were traveling around in a car with a Speedy 100 that I was carrying in and out with kind of a hospital gurney, uh, carrying it into people's places. That machine 
lasted in my car for three years without anything wrong with it. There was no motion system change. There was no alignment. That thing bumped around my car for three years. I probably did 150 demos with it. It was very, very hard working as a mobile unit. I just couldn't pick it up. Had to have a hospital gurney to roll it around. The Rage It on the other hand, I never did bring it mobile with me more than a few times. Um, it didn't seem to have any problems either, so uh, I haven't really tested it long term. Speedy 100 definitely tested that mobile. So if you're looking for a mobile rig, maybe start with the 100 and see where you go from there. The software on a Rayjet is incredibly different than the software from any of our Speedy machines or the SP machines. The Speedy and the SP machines all use a program called Job Control. Uh, if you are familiar with the videos on YouTube, you always see job control coming up. You rarely see what the Rayjet has. The Rayjet has a piece of software called Rayjet Commander. Now, Rayjet Commander is a print driver, just like the Speedy series, except its main focus is for ease of use and not for the power of manufacturing. So I, I see uh, the Rayjet Commander and the print driver for it being used in schools and things like this. It's very visual. Uh, you can't tweak it like you can with the speedies, but you can get all the speeds and powers you need. You can save the materials just like in, in Rayjet. Um, but then once you print it, you, if in order to pinpoint where the laser goes, that's where it sort of falters compared to the job control system. You can pick a point in the upper left corner of your art to play your job from or engrave your job or cut your job, but it's not quite as easy to pinpoint specific jobs onto specific materials. The Rayjet software is great, but the job control software of the Speedy, that's where you really start getting your power. You can pinpoint exactly where graphics are going. You can save many, many different materials in there. You can actually see the bed of your laser um, in sort of graphic form and place your objects along there. It actually shows you where your laser red dot is so you can place your graphics exactly where you want it. Uh, it's just a much superior platform for engraving than you would go with the standard Rayjet Commander. The air assist system on a Rayjet is composed of an air curtain that sort of blows air down generally where we're cutting. It's not a specific air blast from the, the beam. Uh, for that reason, you wouldn't want to use it as a primary cutting tool for anything thick. Uh, of course, it's 30 watt tube stops you from doing that as well. But uh, though it does cut and it does engrave, the air curtain uh, is not specific to blow directly at the beam while it's cutting. The Speedy 100, on the other hand, now we have a, a bar hanging down from the bed that's blowing a jet of air right across the exact point where you're firing your beam. This way we can blow the flammable dust and smoke away exactly where you want it and it's it takes away that flammable dust and smoke. So air assist, air curtain versus jet of air. So who buys each of these machines? Who buys a Rayjet? Who buys a Speedy 100? The person who buys a Rayjet is going to be somebody who's not going to be using their machine as the sole maker of money in their business. They're gonna be someone who's adding engraving as a service. Uh, they're gonna be somebody who's in a lab situation who just needs to mark or cut some parts every now and then. It's gonna be a small school who doesn't have the budget for a, a Speedy 100. It's going to be somebody who's just maybe a hobbyist who's making uh, railroad parts for uh, different railroad models 
or trying to make models for, for something else. It's not going to be the hardcore uh, six hour a day engraver and definitely not meant for uh, the full time engraving model, uh, maybe two, two shifts a day. The Rayjet just can't keep up to that kind of work. That we would suggest you go up to the Speedy 100 for. Now, the Speedy 100, of course, it is going to be a machine that you could use as your sole engraver. A small engraving shop, maybe a one-man operation, or one-woman operation, uh, who is making, um, you know, all sorts of engraved stuff. Uh, the person buying the Speedy 100 would choose the 100 over the Rayjet because they are planning to use it for six hours every day and want to really rely on the ability for it to keep working day after day after day and working very well. So I just want to say the Speedy 100 definitely has the longevity and it has the gusto to perform very well in long use. Now warranty on both of these machines are going to be the same exact same warranty you get with a speedy 100 it's going to be the same warranty you get on a rayjet so warranty isn't going to be a real big issue for you they're about on par with each other uh, in canada here we offer a standard two-year warranty uh, with the option to purchase uh, trocare uh, year to year up to about 10 years so you you can have a fixed cost for your machine should you want to buy 10 years of warranty and away you go. Uh, both are also going to be serviced by our local techs in Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto and Montreal. So as far as those two machines they're both going to be very much equal uh, in the warranty and service department. There you have it. There's some of the reasons why you would choose a Speedy 100 over a Rayjet or maybe if price is a concern and you're not using it very much, why you would choose a Rayjet over a Speedy 100. Now I am at my next customer here, so I'm gonna have to run, but what I want you guys to do, I want you to subscribe to our fantastic YouTube channel because there are videos coming out all the time here. And I want you down below here to make some comments, ask some questions. Tell me if I got something wrong, because even though I've been doing this a while. I don't know everything. So, guys, until next week, take care. Hey, actually, next week, you know what I'm going to do? Next week, we're going to do the difference between the Speedy 100 and the Speedy 300. Okay? Take care, guys.